All right, now that we got the schematic done, the parts chosen, and all the rules set up for the manufacturer, we can actually start building our PCB. Now the actual routing process does take a bit of time, so let's get started right away. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go up to the top here, where this button that says Update PCB from Schematic, and click on that, and then click Update PCB. Then close out of that, and you'll see on your mouse cursor you have all the parts from your circuit. So here are all the parts from our schematic all their footprints. The way KiCad lays this out, KiCad doesn't know physically where any of these parts should be, so it just puts them in a sort of sorted order like this, but this is not how you actually want it to be. You also see that these parts all have these white lines going between each of these pads, and this is called the rat's nest. You can think of these lines as sort of like a guide. This is telling you that this pad, for example, needs to connect to this pad. And I can show that by right-clicking on one of these pads, going to Net Inspection Tools, and then Highlight Net and you'll see these pads light up, and there's a line going from all of them. So what the editor is expecting is that there's going to be a wire that connects all of these pads together. You can press escape on your keyboard to deselect that. So it's a good idea to try and think about how you want your board to be laid out. One thing to get you started is to start grouping the parts that we know need to be together and grouping them together. Another good idea is to also try and move the parts so it minimizes the number of these white lines that cross over each other. So if I go back to the schematic, I can scroll in here and I can see that R1, C1, and Switch1 are all grouped together. Same for R2 and R3. So all these parts could be grouped together and that's a good way we can start organizing our board. So I'm going to scroll a little bit. I'm gonna see you have Switch1 here. I'm gonna move that over here and there's Capacitor1 here and then Resistor1 here. So now we can have those parts grouped together and I'll do the same for Switch2 and 3. Let's also move the LED and its resistor out of the way. And unlike a breadboard, we don't have to worry about having this all on a single row. We could have this down here. We could have it over here. We could have it up here. We could have it anywhere you want. So I'm actually not sure how I want to set this board up. Uh, I haven't made this board before, so we need to have the max module pretty unobstructed because that's where your finger is going to go. But I'm going to take a, a couple of minutes and just play with the parts and see what might look good. So after messing around with layouts, I think this actually might be one of the better layouts. Uh, my reasoning is that all the controls are on the right-hand side, and your finger and the screen will be on the left-hand side. Uh, the Arduino is pointing up, so when you plug it into the USB port, the cable will be going out of the device, naturally. And this also has very few crossover points, which is going to make it easier to route. And if you disagree, you can always make it a different way. It's the same steps for doing it this version or a different layout. Uh, so just pick what you think looks good. So I'm going to rewind time and show you how I laid all this stuff out. Okay, so first thing you want to do, uh, if you haven't done it already, go over here on the left-hand side and click the MM button, where we're going to tell the editor we want to use millimeters and not inches. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go up to the top here. I'm going to change the divisions to 1.27 millimeters. I'm gonna click on the Arduino, press R twice, and then press M to move it. And I have the Arduino face right side up, so when the cable plugs in, it'll come out the top. I'm gonna to move the screen, click on it, press M, and move it, say, right about there. And for the max module, press M, and move it right about there, abouts. Come back to that. And for the LED and the resistor, I'll put them right here. And the resistor right there. Um, you can see right here that this is the ground pin. So if we try and make a wire that goes to this LED, it's gonna have to go around the ground pin. Better solution, rotate it, and have the anode of the LED facing the resistor. So we can just have a direct shot between the two. Now the buttons, move them all over here. I'll take the button, press M. And you can have these buttons facing right side up or sideways, you know, it just depends on however, however you want it to look. I'm gonna just put it right side up for now. And uh, you can have either the capacitor or the resistor first, it doesn't really matter. So I'll do this, have the, uh, so you can see right here that we have a crossover, like this sort of diagonal right here where this pin wants to connect to this pin. Generally you wanna avoid that, so I'm going to rotate it and just have it be a direct shot between the two pins. The more that you can do that, the easier it's going to be to route the board. I'm gonna do the same for the other two buttons. 
So I think this layout looks pretty good. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is how close these parts are. You want to make sure you give yourself enough room that you can actually solder this by hand. Um, if you're not sure how close they are, you can click this measurement tool down here and just measure between the pins and see how far away they are from each other. Um, you also want to make sure you don't put this max module too close to the screen because remember the, the max the screen module isn't exactly the same size as the footprint. It's probably going to be a little bit longer. So if you want to scoot the max module down a little bit more, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So now before we go any further, what we're going to do is we're going to define the edge cuts, which is used by the manufacturer when they actually go to cut the board in the factory. This is going to tell them how big our board should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the divisions at the top here, click this, go down to one millimeter per division, go over to the side here on the right, click the line tool, and then click the edge cuts layer right here. We want to start drawing a box. So I'm going to start at the corner here. And I'm going to use the guides and make sure this is a straight line down here. So the angle is 90 degrees. So that's fine. Do the next one over here. Angle is zero degrees. Click again. Again, using the guides to try and keep the box center. And then join it back up here. And then press escape. And this right here is what our board shape is going to look like. So if we press Alt-3, we now have this as our layout. And this board is going to be a 75 by 50 millimeter board. So right before we get started adding wires, what we're going to do is we're going to define our copper fills. This is basically going to define what the leftover copper is going to do that's not part of a trace. And there's a couple reasons why we would want to do this, but one of the main reasons is that we can take care of all of our ground pins right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on front, the layer here that's called front. I'm going to click on this button right here, which is add filled zone. And I'm going to go and click just above our board. What we want to do is click front and back, make sure those are both selected. And now we can select the net. This is telling what the default is for the leftover copper, what net it's going to connect to. So I'm going to select the ground net. So select ground, click OK. And now we want to draw a box around our board. This one doesn't have to be perfect at all. You can just make it whatever you like. As long as it covers the entire area of the board, that's what we want. So once you reach the end, double click and then click Escape. And now you have a fill layer. Now what I want you to do is press the letter B for Bravo on your keyboard. What this has done is it's taken all the empty space that doesn't have traces, which is the entire board since we haven't laid a trace yet, and filled it in with a ground layer. So if we zoom in over here to this ground, we can see that there's no more guide coming off of this pin. Instead, we have these four copper spokes poking out of this ground pin. This is called a thermal relief. And what this has done is it's taken all of the ground points and it connected them to this copper fill. So that means we do not have to worry about routing the ground pins at all for right now. Instead, we're going to start routing everything else except ground. So let's start with something simple. Let's start with this resistor and the LED. So I'm going to go up here to this bar here, and I'm going to set the divisions to 0.1 millimeters per division to give us more breathing room. I'm going to click on the front layer here, and then click on this button, which is the route tracks button. Next, I'm going to go up to the left-hand corner here for this dropdown, click that, and I'm going to select 0.2 millimeters for our track width. And now I'm going to click between pin 15 and the resistor, and then on the other side of the resistor to the LED. And now moving down a little bit, we can wire up the first button. So we can notice from the rat's nest right here, we have one wire that wants to go like this horizontally. We have another wire that wants to go vertically up like this. The problem is we can't have a trace cross another trace on the same layer. So if I try and do this, you'll see it rejects it and tries to route around it. And this is where the XY design philosophy comes into play, where you have one layer for wires that go horizontally and one layer for wires that go vertically. So for this example, we would have these wires all connect like this. Now, if we want to route the five volt pads together, we would switch layers. We could also press V on the keyboard to the back layer and then route from here to up there. And this isn't always exactly possible all the time, but this can help if you try and stick to it, reduce the number of weird shapes your tracks have to take. Okay, and I went ahead and did the same thing for the other two buttons. Now we can take the five volt pad here, which is connected to the other five volt pads, switch to our front layer, and then wire it up to the Arduino's five volt pin. But now we've got kind of an issue. You can see here that the Arduino's pins are in reverse order to what the buttons are in. 
And while you could go and reverse the order of the buttons, instead I'm going to use this as an opportunity to teach you about vias, and I'll save that for the next video.